Welcome back, and in this video, we're going to focus on municipal wastewater treatment plants. So these are the systems that serve communities. So here's an example on the screen of a fairly larger one, and domestic wastewater treatment plant options that exist are on-site treatment systems, which often include homes, but we're going to speak more in this video about the centralized sewage treatment plants, also known as publicly owned treatment works. There's not a large private market of companies that want to be in the business of treating our sewage. Um, and we're going to go through some examples really quick of some on-site treatment systems. So the most common one um, on-site would be a septic system, so a conventional septic design. We'll discuss those more later in the course. And then there are also sewage lagoon ponds that some people will have instead. These are far more common. These, um, you know, less common. In many cases, people view them less attractive. They have fences around them and all that. Sometimes it's hard for people to do on-site treatment because they don't have the land or the costs can be prohibitive. So some people may engage in alternative uh, ways of dealing with their waste. Here's an example of them potentially catching their sewage in a bucket, and then they would then discharge the waste somewhere else. Um, there are other examples like straight pipes, where a pipe runs out to a creek or a river. These are not permitted by the Clean Water Act. Health departments will not permit them. But in some cases, people who are of low income, um, they can't afford anything else. So health departments have to figure out ways of working with them. And um, some people may say, well, just shut their water off. But uh, it's hard when somebody doesn't have the resources to even live. So a lot of the ways that exist are when real estate transfers happen, they may prohibit anybody from ever living in there. And then more uh, assertive communities may actually condemn the property and kick people out. So those are different things that are out there. Um, so getting into like the municipal systems, and we'll talk more later about septic systems, the municipal wastewater plants are the best option when you have a lot of people living closely together. You have a high enough tax base to pay for not just the building of the treatment works, but also the maintenance of it. And you need typically some sort of receiving water, typically a stream, creek, river uh, in the area. Again, lakes are not ideal. We don't want to be discharging into non-flowing waters. The size of the plants vary. So uh, there are small plants. I know like in Beattyville, Kentucky, they have a plant that looks very similar to this, uh, uh, quite, quite small. And then you can get up into larger plants. And we'll look at the Otter Creek wastewater treatment plant here in a second. Um, but you can get even larger and larger. And we'll go through some of the different uh, aspects of a wastewater treatment plant here in a second. So the raw sewage comes in. It goes through these things called bar screens that have a really nasty job of getting all the plastics and things out. Some will have this particular common neuter. Richmond does not, to my knowledge. Then the water goes into a grit chamber. There's no grit added to it. Grit is the uh, like pea gravel that ends up in the pipes. It's the um, like eggshells. It's the uh, heavier often rockier, grittier type material that can be spun out seeds, like tomato seeds. Uh, the water kind of spins and then the stuff goes down to the bottom. From there, the wastewater goes into a primary clarifier where it kind of sits. Um, this diagram is not the scale. The primary clarifier is usually a lot larger than the grit chamber. The primary clarifiers, the water kind of just sits sludge sinks to the bottom. There is uh, a lot of uh, microbial activity that helps facilitate this process. So the sludge sinks to the bottom. This is all anoxic or anaerobic. And then up here, 
it goes to the secondary treatment system where secondary treatment systems add oxygen in many cases through an air compressor as well as uh, there are other strategies that make the water more turbulent but you add oxygen to provide a more efficient way of treating the wastewater using kind of a living system where there are facultative anaerobes from here that are also there continue to degrade things but then there are small animal-like organisms. Um, many would put them in the, uh, the old kingdom of Protista and they eat up all the microbes. And as they eat and get fat and heavy, they sink to the bottom and become part of the sludge. Some of that sludge is captured and that sludge can be disposed of. Some of it they return because it's got some of the good bugs in it or their progeny and we can continue to support this ecosystem. After the water is cleared up out of our secondary clarifiers, it then goes on to be disinfected. This example shows something like a bleach being used. UV treatment is used in Richmond. So we'll go through some examples here uh, in a minute. Actually, um, at this moment, I'm gonna zoom out and show you the Richmond wastewater plant. Okay, so we're going to look at the Otter Creek wastewater plant here in a second. And you can see Richmond, Kentucky. As you remember, the Kentucky River is over here and it flows from a southeast direction towards the northwest. And our drinking water plant is near Waco here on the Kentucky River. Otter Creek drains the northern part of Richmond and Madison County. You can see Lake Reeve actually is kind of one of the headwater streams of Otter Creek. If we can follow Otter Creek here north out of Richmond and see that Otter Creek, which also meets up with Dreaming Creek, eventually flows out to the Kentucky River here near Fort Boonesboro State Park. And uh, this is where Daniel Boone and a lot of folks, you know, Fort Boonesboro and everything, um, all was in this area. So this is Otter Creek here. I'm going to switch this to a satellite view. And as the satellite view kicks in, we're going to zoom in here and you would be able to go there heading north on Red House Road. And you can see our wastewater treatment plant right here along Otter Creek. So the effluent goes into Otter Creek. All the wastewater for the city of Richmond flows downhill or is pumped up and down, up and down through lift pumps to where it eventually gets here. Ideally, as much of it as possible will come here through gravity, gravity feeding to reduce, you know, where it just uses the, the elevation change and it flows downhill. But anyways, as we get to the actual wastewater treatment plant, I can zoom in and I'll switch this thing to turn it around a little bit. When we arrived, they would check us in. We'd come into the actual um, facility, or I'd come into the facility, let them know we're here, and then they'd let me give you guys the tour. And the first place we go at the wastewater plant is the point that actually has the highest elevation, which is right in this building here, which is where the bar screens are at. The waste will pass, pass through these screens. The plastics will be taken out. Here are two of the grit chambers. The grit chambers are right there. The water kind of spins in a tornado-like fashion. The grit goes out and will be discarded over here in this area. We'll talk about that in a second. The clear water, or the more I would say clear water, the grit free water, which still has a lot of, of turbidity to it. We'll go over here to our primary treatment system. So primary treatment is in this front half of these chambers. Primary treatment is predominantly anaerobic. The BOD far exceeds the amount of oxygen in there. Anaerobic digestion is occurring, or 
anaerobic, not just digestion, but anaerobic uh, processes. As even the anaerobes get heavy, they fall to the bottom as sludge. But a lot of sludge production occurs after the bacteria have kind of got ha fat and happy here. They then move into this area where the water moves around back and forth. And there are these big aerators. And on top of here, you can see these pumps that are aeration pumps that add compressed air into the wastewater. This compressed air adds a lot of oxygen. It supports a lot of microbes to do a lot of breakdown. And there are a variety of different ones that are in there that eat up all the microbes. As they, these animal-like critters eat the microbes, they sink to the bottom, and this accumulates a lot of sludge at the bottom of it. The sludge will eventually be discarded. Now, the clear water from here goes over to the to our secondary clarifiers. So the water will come over here and be a lot more clear than it is here. The water will still have sludge form at the bottom of this. It'll sink out to the bottom. The clear water will make its way to the sides and trickle over a couple different things here and then out the edge, the most clear water will be collected. You need to slow the water down a lot. So we want to give the water time to settle out. So the water settles here. The sludge settles. The clearer water makes its way to the edges. And that clear water is then collected and moved over to this point here. This point here, there's ultraviolet light that hits the clear water that does the disinfection. There's a series of steps where the water flows out down like some waterfall-like steps and they oxygenate the water more here. The water can then be also tested here and samples can be collected here because this is our finished product. This is where the effluent is going to leave the wastewater plant. It goes out a pipe out to Otter Creek. Presumably the water is less infectious here and maybe not even infectious at all. However, we know that viruses can evade the wastewater treatment process. So we worry about, um, you know, viruses potentially being there and that. Um, but even then the viral load of what's in the wastewater was a lot less than what would be here. Throughout this process, sludge is collected. A lot of sludge is collected and that sludge is all sent back here to this area. The bar screen captures plastics that then fall off the screen and go into a dumpster here. The sludge that's collected off the bottom goes to this building here where there are several sludge presses that squeeze the water out of the sludge and the sludge turns dry almost like brownie mix um, and falls into dumpsters and these dumpsters and you can see the, the the debris trail there. These dumpsters are then hauled out by truck to the Estill County landfill or the landfill that's in Estill, Estill County near Irvine, near the uh, Estill County High School. And that sludge is then applied at the landfill and apparently helps break down some of the waste at the landfill. Some places used to pay for this sludge or take the sludge for free. Farmers who would grow food that doesn't go into the human food supply, but maybe grow uh, things for like uh, uh, grass or growing um, sod, um, growing straw for uh, construction. There was a lot of reasons why you might want to use that to make land more, more profitable from an agricultural standpoint. So overall, that's the Otter Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, some people say that the water, or not some people, I've seen it, the water coming out of this effluent is actually cleaner in many cases than the water that's actually in Otter Creek because um, the stream itself has got a lot of um, pollution sources sometimes from, you know, agriculture and runoff and failing septic systems and everything else. So I'll stop the video here and we'll get more into the wastewater section in a minute.